this is Kate from Generate Magic and today I want to talk about action as pertains to your desire because I feel like a lot of times this whole discussion of like do you act or do you just sit on your butt and think about your desire I think it kind of um, descends into the sort of either or dichotomy and even the discussion of inspired action and what constitutes inspired action I feel like is very simplistic and so I want to talk about it from my perspective and really kind of bring a bunch of teachings together and um, and to kind of demonstrate how it's really kind of all one and the same. And so one, one of the teachings that really resonates with me is Mac Maxwell Maltz and from Psycho-Cybernetics and this whole idea, right, of you have a goal and so, and in reality transurfing, it's kind of similar in that basically you're lighting, and they call it lighting up your future frame. But it's the same, it's the same sort of thing, right? And then, you know, in Manifestation, Law of Assumption, Neville Goddard, you might refer to that as your state of wish fulfilled. And, but in every single situation, it's kind of using different language, right, to kind of talk about the same thing. So it's your end, end result or end goal, um, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And once you light up this future frame or once you light up that state of wish fulfilled and really feel integrated with it, right? Like you very, you have a very vivid picture of what it is that you're trying to achieve, then the steps just kind of fall into place. And so it's really kind of this whole, it becomes a very unified, very flow-based process where the the journey and the end result are kind of one and the same. And the action and the desire are kind of one and the same, right? It's one whole integrated process. And so then the whole question of, do I act, do I not act? Is this an inspired action or is it not? All of those questions become irrelevant in the state because it's this very joyous, very flow-based state. And Joseph Rodriguez has some really wonderful discussions around this and using very precise examples, both from his own life and also tying together a lot of these teachings. And, but yeah, I think the whole concept of flow is what's really key. And when you're in the state of flow and in the state of joy, and yeah, where the whole process is just like joyous and euphoric, and you're learning and you're growing and expanding as you go along, and yeah, just really just enjoying the whole process, and then you're no longer in that state of waiting or in that state of questioning, um, you know, questioning, am I doing it right? When is it going to appear? And all again, all of those questions just kind of fall to the wayside because you're just in your flow and you're in the whole process. And you're, you really become an unstoppable when you're in that place. And so I like the way that Maxwell Maltz talks about it as being this um, sort of servo mechanism is what he calls it. And my kind of interpretation of this is um, there's no failure, only feedback. And so he refers to it kind of as like a temporary failure, right? And um, where, for instance, like let's say in your business, you do a promotion and your promotion doesn't go the way that you intended or the way that you were hoping. So instead of seeing that as a failure, you see that as, as being feedback of, oh, this is what I need to adjust. You know, th these are some elements that I kind of need to fine tune. And it could be a range of things, right? It could either be kind of more looking at the outer level of things from a more traditional marketing perspective of, oh, maybe I need to do an offer that's more aligned with what the market wants or what my specific audience wants. Or it could be more kind of even looking at it from an inner perspective and kind of thinking, well, when I... When I did the offer the last time, I was feeling kind of nervous, kind of insecure. And so, so that's why it didn't go the way that I expected. But now that I know these things, I can, it will turn out differently moving forward. And so, yeah, and it's almost kind of like um, the way Maxwell Maltz, Maltz talks about it. It's almost like this whole process is necessary for you to get um, for you to make those adjustments, right? And for you to get more and more aligned with what it is that you truly want. And, um, and so it's all just, it's all just part of the process. And so pretty soon, um, yeah, I like the way he describes it as like temporary failures, right? And yeah, I would even kind of take it 
kind of one step beyond that and say that it's not even really a failure at all, right? Again, it's just kind of giving you feedback on what to adjust moving forward and also just what you feel more aligned with moving forward. And um, yeah, like in the, for instance, in my business in the past, some of these past things that I, I tried to do and, and they didn't work out the way I expected, it's not even things that I feel aligned with anymore. And so a lot of this is just about discovering where your joy is and where your true alignment is. And so I want to kind of talk about my process of copywriting and kind of a, um, yeah, just my whole journey when it came to being a freelance copywriter. And so I, um, so to give you a little bit of a backstory, I was an English major in college and there's a lot of cliches about an English major, English majors. And there's even that song from the musical Avenue Q, what do you do with a BA in English? And so, and so it's just this whole idea, right? That you're just going to be aimless and not really have any direction and you're just going to be financially struggling as well. And so, and so then I, after I got my BA, when I went on to get my master's in a creative writing program and once again, it was kind of seen, it was kind of viewed as being sort of like a, well, I guess a useless degree is the, to put it bluntly, you know, it's something that you do for your own kind of personal enjoyment, but it's not really something that has like any practical application, really. That's kind of the way that it's, I guess, the conventional viewpoint of this type of degree, right? Like you don't go into getting this type of degree um, thinking that you're going to become a millionaire. And so, and so I, um, and on top of that, that the people um, who were teaching in this particular program that I was in, most of them were pretty kind of pessimistic. And this is before self-publishing really took off. And so, so at that time, it was really just kind of all about the big five publishing companies. And just how difficult it, it was kind of like, I guess like Hollywood in the sense that making it that the odds were really stacked against you. This is the viewpoint that most people had at this time, including people that were in the writing industry and that it was really, really hard, like practically impossible, even to make it past what they called the slush pile. And so when you would submit a manuscript to either a literary magazine or a publisher, it would be put into what they called the slush pile, right? And so it would be put in this great big pile where you would be lucky if somebody even looked at it. <laughs> and let alone that you would actually make any money out of being published. And so like I mentioned before, like these professors who were telling us this, they weren't trying to hurt us or they weren't trying to dissuade us. They were just speaking from their own personal experience, right? And there was probably like an element of like wanting to protect us. And because probably they had gone into the publishing industry with high hopes for themselves and they had been disappointed. And so they were, yeah, so they, it was almost like they were trying to protect us in a certain sense. And I even had a, a professor who told me, he said he told me that that I would have a very hard time making it. And he said, not because I wasn't talented, but because my stuff was, my writing was weird and it wasn't conventional in the least sense. And so, so when I graduated um, from both of those programs, from both my undergraduate and then later my master's, I already had all these stories swirling around in my head on top of my own insecurities and doubts. And so I was just kind of floundering. Like I love school. Like school was really, it was always just kind of like the highlight of my life, like learning and academics. And so once I got out there, I just had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And I just fell into the state of despair. And um, I went from being, I had always been like the star student and just kind of this, yeah, I guess just this kind of shining example and this source of pride and joy for my family to being kind of this this disappointment to my fam family and my this I guess yeah like a like they saw me like as a failure and um, they would ask me you know when are you gonna get a real job or you know questions like that basically and so um, so and so but my mom started kind of mentioning to me 
that there were occupations, writing occupations, where people did make money. And so she mentioned things like being a technical writer. She, um, I don't know if she actually used the term copywriter, but she bought a book for me that was about all about how to break into the copywriting industry. And it was by Bob Bly, who's actually a very well-known and well-respected um, copywriter who's been in the industry for many years, many decades, in fact. And because it was coming from my mom, I kind of put it off for a long time. And, but I did, I did kind of start reading the book just to kind of give her the benefit of the doubt. And he was talking in the book about how how much money he made and so that kind of caught my attention because at the time i was broke and struggling <laughs> and and then i remember i actually bob Bly, he actually gave his his phone number in the back of the book and so i actually called the phone number because i had a question and it, he actually answered the phone so it wasn't like a voice recorder or a secretary it was actually him that answered and spoke to me so that always really stood out to me but i still didn't really start pursuing this or considering it seriously as a career and it wasn't until i received a brochure in the mail and the brochure it was called the barefoot rider and it was actually like a picture of this person sitting barefoot on the beach drinking their margarita and um with her laptop <laughs> And that, that whole image, that whole concept of being the barefoot rider, that really captured my imagination. And so I would say that that was sort of the thing that set it all, everything into motion. So that was kind of my state of wish fulfilled or an example of lighting up my future frame, right? And um, yeah, and, and from there, I just set everything into motion. And I didn't know anything back then about manifestation, certainly not about Neville Goddard, but I did, I was kind of in getting into self-help then and self-help and personal development and just kind of like the old, yeah, the old school type self-help, which I think really does have a lot of great wisdom in it. And so I think this all kind of goes to show, right, that even if you haven't studied manifestation for years or even if you don't even know about all this stuff you can still achieve your goals just by applying these basic principles so anyway i had this vision and so then i started doing the practical steps and so i got some courses from awai and like on copy you know just some home study courses on how to be a copywriter and i started studying all the the greats um and actually hand copying sales letters and that were considered i guess like the greatest sales letters of all time and really just kind of studying what went into being a successful copywriter i really just got fascinated with the whole field and everything that went into it like it really became a passion of mine and so i didn't have of course i was just getting started out and so i didn't so the question was kind of what do i do when i'm just starting out and people want to know about my experience right and so what i did is i i created a website and i actually created these kind of mock samples for um yeah for different products right and so i did it in different types of of copy like i did it for feature articles and i did it for direct sales letters and just all sorts of like different types of products like products that i personally enjoyed and um so yeah just to kind of have a demonstration out there and and just to show that i could write and on top of that i was reading a book at the time by james allen um, as a man thinketh and then I was also reading a book called the slight edge as well that gave me a lot of really great principles kind of more to work like on the inner game and I and so then I just started once I had the website and the samples available I made this excel spreadsheet of just like all the companies that I wanted to potentially work for and not even that I wanted to work for just companies in general and specifically I was kind of looking in the the arena of personal development because that was a big passion of mine at the time and 
So even if I had never heard of the company, but it was in that that genre, I put the, the company on my list. And then I just started reaching out to them one by one. I had a whole template that I used and I just started cold emailing all these different companies. And then I would just write down, I would mark on my spreadsheet, I would mark the date that I contacted them, whether or not I got a response. And then I would do follow-ups. And so certainly there was a lot of action that went into this ride. And maybe knowing what I know now, I would have done it differently. But overall, like it, it didn't really feel like a big, like a chore, right? Or a grunt work. I was, I was in my flow and I was just kind of like enjoying this whole process and, and just the whole process of the excitement of moving forward um, into a, a career that I was very passionate about. And really just kind of stepping into this whole idea this whole vision of being the barefoot rider. <laughs> this is what I think what really compelled me and motivated me during this process. And so, like I said, like I just contacted everybody and, but there were, there were a few ideas I, that I had of people that I specifically wanted to work for. And so one of these was Brian Tracy. And I actually ended up getting an interview with, not with him personally, but with the company that, the kind of marketing company, I guess you would call it, that managed all his campaigns. And so I played out exactly in my head before the interview, exactly how I wanted that interview to go. And so when I did it, it was just all like perfectly smooth. Um, I didn't feel nervous at all. And so I ended up getting the position to basically, it wasn't like a full-time position or a permanent position, but basically to do this direct response campaign um, for a new product of his, which involved writing an email sequence and also writing a long copy sales letter as well. And so the whole process was really just kind of like a, a dream come true. And it was really fun the whole time. I learned a ton. And um, to be honest, like I think I should have made a little bit more for it. But at the time, considering here I was like a brand new copywriter, this was my very first assignment. It was something that I would really enjoyed and I was really passionate about like I would not have changed like one thing about it like it w I was just so grateful to have this assignment and to really you know have this on my resume as well and so slight and then yeah and then afterwards they just said my copy was awesome they didn't really have any like big things big complaints or anything like that so the whole thing went, went really well and after that, the woman who had been, kind of been responsible for hiring me for that campaign, she actually ended up leaving the company shortly after that. And so then when I would, would, when I would call the company later, like looking for more work, they would have no clue <laughs> who I was. And um, which was okay because it all, um, it all kind of, like I said, it was it was great to have that on my resume and that gave me that boost of confidence that I needed. And, but then I think this kind of, this is another kind of phase, I think, in the, in the process. This is kind of giving you another example of action where that was very, the whole process of getting that assignment was very flow-based. And, but after this, I kind of, because I wasn't seeing the bigger picture at the time. All I could think was that I got this amazing assignment and then all of a sudden they, the company was ignoring me and I wasn't getting any more work on top of that. And so I just fell into the state of despair and thinking that my, that the, the universe had been shining on me and now the light had been turned off. I, I had fallen out of God's favor and I kind of fell into the state of like desperation on top of that and this this really like needy state where basically I was just begging companies to give me work and I was um, yeah I mean I would I would do sometimes I would do work for free just to get samples and they would really kind of like take advantage of that, right? And keep asking me to do like more and more assignments for free. Or like I would um, just, yeah, just work with these people that were kind of like, that were nickeling and diming me. And 
Um, and on top of that, just weren't very enjoyable to work with. Like I didn't feel aligned with the work. It, again, it, it was, the, the work was in a genre, a genre I was passionate about. It was in personal development, but I felt like the clients that I was working for didn't really practice what they preached. And so they were very kind of negative and pessimistic and definitely not in a state of abundance at all. And, and so, um, but then eventually, you know, I, I persisted and it's not like I, because I had other work that I was doing, like I was also teaching at the time and that's a whole other story as well. And so, um, you know, so it's not like I needed this money just to survive, but I still had this goal and I still had this vision that was driving me forward. And so I, I persisted with it. I persisted in this vision and, and I continued reaching out to companies. And eventually I did get kind of, um, I guess what you would call full-time positions. Technically I was an ind independent contractor, but it was like kind of regular positions where I was, I was considered like the writer, you know, for these different companies. And I would be getting a steady stream of work with these companies, which is really the ideal position that you want to be in as a freelancer. You don't want to constantly be chasing for work or chasing work or looking for work. And you want to be able to have that reliable income. And so that's the position that I eventually found myself in. On top of that, all of these clients have just been an absolute joy to work with, including my, my current clients. And it's a work that, um, yeah, I just feel like in my flow when I'm writing it. And my clients are amazing. Like they don't try to micromanage me. They just trust me to do a good job. They appreciate the work that I'm doing. And the work is, is not at all stressful because I'm a very like multifaceted person. I have many interests. And so I actually have quite a bit of free time um, and flexibility to do the thing, the other things that are driving me in my life because I never saw myself as just being like a full-time copywriter. That was never really my goal. And so I really kind of have found myself just in this perfect scenario and, um, and just loving the work that I do. And I especially feel grateful when I hear people that are just in jobs that they're really like not aligned with at all. And they have to, you know, drive, um, you know, battle rush hour traffic all day. And I mean, not all day, but they, every day they have to battle rush hour traffic. And yeah, I'm just so grateful. I've certainly been there and I'm just grateful to no longer be in that position anymore and to have work that I am aligned with. And um, there was one other thing that I would, oh yes, and so I, um, yeah, so, so it got to the point where I had kind of forgotten about that original vision of being the barefoot rider because I was just happy to be doing work that inspired me. And like I said, that paid me a good income and really gave me that freedom and that flexibility that I was desiring. Like that to me was, um, was more than enough. And the fact that I could do the work from anywhere because I did it completely remotely. And so at one point I actually found myself on like a little um, mini vacation. And I was in um, this, this cute beach, beach town in Mexico. And I was actually sitting on a hammock and I could see the beach from the hammock that I was sitting on. And I had my, you know, I was working on my laptop. I was working on an assignment and I could, you know, I just, I had this whole vision of my feet and then the waves right beyond my feet. I thought, wait a minute, I am the barefoot rider. <laughs> and it was just kind of this, this wonderful moment, you know, where I realized that I had made it. And so, so yeah, this whole thing is, is basically just about having faith in that vision. And even if you lose sight of that um, original vision, you know, you're not 
affirming on it or doing imaginal acts with it every day and and it just leaves your mind completely like the vision of the barefoot rider did for me just having faith that if that this vision is tr strong enough and that alignment is strong enough it's still going to be driving you and also having faith that even when you have these quote-unquote temporary failures or missteps as I did where and there were times right where I worked with these clients where I wasn't aligned with and um, just doing all this grunt work that I really didn't enjoy at all and not getting paid what I was worth or some cases paid at all. Um, all of this was leading me um, to this this larger goal and it was all leading me on the right path and giving me a very clear vision of what I wanted, which is which is to have work that I felt where I felt that sense of flow, where I felt appreciated, and where I could do, where I had a lot of freedom to do what I wanted and not be micromanaged. And, um, and so yeah, so that is what I have for you today. And so thank you so much for watching and have a great day.